You know that when the people talked about this survey again, and I'm referring to the same survey that was done in Biola, that 1,400 young adults, that when the parents are having marital problems, or even divorced, the children are most likely not going to continue on. So whenever we as husband and wife, when we argue, when we fight, when we fail to show love, it does have a lasting impact. And just be careful. And I want to take a look at the second part. Is that Abraham, how his faith is passed on. And I want to just, again, to bring you back to that that, that relay. You know, that it, is, it is, you can imagine in the, in the heavenly realms as the angel and God are looking on. Instead of looking at Mount Olympic, they were looking at Mount Moriah. And here, they are looking not only just how Abraham was going to pass his test of faith in God. And they're going to see whether Abraham has done his job right as a father, and Isaac is going to follow. Be the same way, faithful to God as his father. So this passage, chapter 22 of Genesis, is not just about Abraham. It is, it's a summary. It is the pinnacle. It's the climax of Abraham's his raising up of his son. Is whether his sons, after all this 40 years, has he done it right? In verse 7 to 9, it says that when they arrive, and then Isaac asks, Father, we have the coals and we have the wood, but where is the lamb for sacrifice? And then it says, Abraham answered, My son, God would provide the lamb. The two of them walked on, and then they reached a place. And you see that here, Abraham had done his job right. And you ask me, what? Isaac knew exactly what his father was up to. He was going to build an altar, and his father was going to make sacrifice and to serve the God. You know, Abraham didn't go to church. Abraham didn't study the Bible. But how would Isaac knew that what his father was doing with this God of his? Because the scriptures and the Bible tell us Abraham was a man who builds altar. And then he builds altar, he would select a place and he would put the stones around it and he would come frequently come in and bring in his own very first, his finest, either his harvest or his, the best of his cattle. And then he would slaughter them and then he would place it on the altar and he would light them up. And he would be there in seclusion, in his own prayer and meditations. And the sun... Wow, that's what my father does. So he knew about building altars because Abraham built many altars. They were nomadic peoples. Wherever they went, as soon as they settled down, Abraham built altars. And that's what the Bible says. And the son knew that. And the son probably would also participate in building an altar and gathering, and killing of the sacrifice. And Abraham would have to explain why I have done this. You know that in addition to the good relationship with Isaac, the father and the son, the mother and the children, we have to provide them a Christian home by teaching them. It is our job to teach them what we believe. Elsie mentioned that 
The Awana is going to be starting soon. The Sunday school, the Chinese school will be starting soon. It's great. But we somehow we think about, this is what religious education starts. You know, many of the parents would have the same attitudes. Our kids will resume their Christian learning once the Awana starts. But you know, the Christian learning, our learning of faith starts at home, would never depend on the children's Sunday school. But yet, we have now, we delegate it, it says, we bring our kids to the Sunday school, and we, bye-bye, go in, go in. Give mom and dad a hug and kiss, go in. That's where you're going to learn. You know, that is totally, absolutely false. Never in the Bible it says that the learning of our children about God is taking place in Sunday school. But don't hold me to this, but a church should have its own responsibility of helping our parents and our family to learn. But you have 100 and almost 166 hours or a week. Church only has one or two hours of your kids' time. You, we as the parents, we have to do that 99% of the teachings. Yes, Sunday school and your youth group do provide some systematic educations. But that is not where our children should be learning. Our children should be learning, just like Deuteronomy chapter 6. It says, when your children are at home, you are supposed to teach them diligently. And it talked about three things. First, it was the teaching. It was the one-to-one. It was from father to the children. And you notice, in the Old Testament, it's the men that are doing the teaching. How many of we fathers do the teachings? You know that the, how somehow the, the role has all reversed. We let the mother do the teaching. But then in Deuteronomy chapter 6, it also talks about the second things that we are supposed to talk with them. Teaching is one way communication. And it says when your children are older, you are supposed to talk with them wherever they are at home and outside the house. And that is where we fail again. We just do teaching, and we don't talk about things. We don't ask our children, how are you doing in faith? Do you pray? Would you like to pray about this? Would you even pray with mom and dad about our problem and the, the, the issues that we're facing? Do you have any things that we can pray about? Why do we need to pray? Why do we... Evil things happen in this world. We're supposed to talk about it, but parents, we refrain from it. And then Deuteronomy chapter 6, it also talks about the third things. In addition to teaching and then talking, discussing, and then you're supposed to remind them. And that's what the, the Bible talks about. You make braids on their hands and on, them, on, on their clothes. This is not to, for you to go out to the bookstore to buy things, to put a pin here, put, uh, put, put a, a, a bracelet there. No, it's, it's to remind them. When the kids are older, they probably won't feel like talking to you anymore. Or like my teenagers, when I ask them, they say, what's happening? Nothing. Would you like to talk about it? Mm. <laughs> and then what the parents could do, we had to remind them. You can send an email, forward a nice uh, devotional article to your kids. You can learn how to do a short message, <laughs> text message to them. I am praying for you. 